In this video, I talk a lot about the history of the original Surface Duo and the cooperation between Microsoft and Google. And a big part of the context for this conversation was, of course, the fact that Android 11 was yet to arrive on Surface Duo. Of course, one day after filming this video, Android 11 did arrive on Surface Duo. So rather than reshooting this video again, putting the same shirt back on, editing in a different intro or something. I'm just going to put this preface here in the beginning. Android 11 has arrived. That does not change the content of this video. It just makes something I say early on uh, factually inaccurate. So just bear with me and please do enjoy the video. Guys, I don't think it is any broad exaggeration to say that Microsoft's folding own the Surface Duo might have one of the strangest and most confusing histories of any device to actually make it out into the public hands and into the eyes of critics. Today, as we pull our train fully into Speculation Station, what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to tell you a story about what I think might have gone wrong in terms of the software development on Surface Duo. As you probably know, Surface Duo 1, it is at time of recording January in 2022. This device has been out for a very long time and Android 11 is still yet to arrive. And that is a massive, massive problem. And what I'm gonna do today is not give an excuse for Microsoft, but perhaps outline a series of events that could explain to some degree why this has taken so long. And by doing so, I'm going to cover something I've heard rumblings of a few times. Now look, I cannot confirm whether or not the story I'm about to tell you is in fact true, if it's actually what happened. However, it is interesting to think about, and it might be the case. Like I said, I've heard some rumblings. I've had some people tell me this is what happened, people that claim to have insider knowledge, but I've been unable to substantiate these claims uh, further in, in, in a more hard way. So I'm going to present this as a hypothetical, a what if, and it does pass the sniff test. It passes the eye test. It does seem to line up with the events that we do know happen. So let's have some fun speculating here a little bit. Let's lay these things out. So as we all know by now, especially now that this has been fully unfurled in front of all of us via a Windows Central article, Surface Duo started its life as a very different product and eventually it became the Andromeda project and it ran something called Andromeda OS. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Windows Central. They just did a whole video showing Andromeda OS. Eventually that was in fact canned put on the shelf, and it appeared the Surface Duo, as it would come to be known, was dead in the water. Well, that was until Panos Panay had a meeting with Hiroshi Lockheimer, a big time guy over there at Google, and they had uh, a series of very productive conversations. And there's an article here, a write up here, on protocol, how Google and Microsoft teamed up to reinvent smartphones. And it details how Panos Panay managed to have this sort of random meeting with Hiroshi Lockheimer and how he pitched Duo to him. And Microsoft and Google then moved into a sort of partnership to help bring Android to Surface Duo, but also to make sure Android was going to work well on Surface Duo. And this was not just sort of a, we'll do this with or without you type of deal. In this article, a direct quote from Panay, he says, quote, if he's like, I don't think I want to do this, we wouldn't make the product. It was either we're doing this together or we're not doing it. This was really seen as a collaborative effort. Microsoft understood that this could not run Windows. They tried it with Andromeda OS. It was buggy, it was crashy, it was missing deadline after deadline after deadline. It was not good and it wasn't going to have app support like it needed to have. And by putting Android on it, that solves all of those problems. Well, so we thought, still a little bit of bug problems going on here, but you, you see what I mean. And that's what he thought. He thought, let's do this with Google, not using Google software, but actually 
together. Let's continue in this article because I really want to nail down this idea of the Google Microsoft partnership that they really were supposed to be working collaboratively on Duo. Let's read this paragraph here. After some small talk, Panay laid out the vision. He had that early prototype, a few pictures and a rough pitch. He said, quote, it's the Microsoft you love and the Android you know. And we want to put these together. He explained that it would mean for customers to run multiple apps at a time to get more done on portable devices. He talked about the emotions and the flow, as he often does. And then he asked for help to make the dual screen idea real. He told Lockheimer, quote, that would take your team, not my team. And there's plenty more in this protocol article, which I will definitely have linked down below that like button. You should definitely give it a read because it really does add a lot of credence to what I'm saying here. But let's close the loop with this final paragraph. Now with Duo about to go on sale, this was of course published just before the original Duo released, Panay and Lockheimer refused to say they've accomplished anything. Both acknowledged that the work is just beginning as they try to both improve the dual screen experience and bring it to more Android devices. They seem to feel as though they're firmly on the same team though, pushing forward toward the same goal. And after so many months of constant talking, meeting, and debates, they now interact like colleagues and count each other as friends. How heartwarming. Quote, I'm not tired of Panos, Lockheimer said near the end of their first ever joint interview before Panay cut him off. I'm very tired of Hiroshi. <laughs> they agree on this much. Their companies can do more together than apart and there's room yet to move the mobile industry forward. Okay, so after all of this, right, you've got Google and Microsoft working together on Duo. You have all of this going, this, this, this rich partnership. We're gonna build this together. Duo comes out and it's got a lot of bugs. And then as the months stretch on and Android 11 never arrives, like I said, January of 2022, it's still not here. Hopefully by the time you guys are watching this, it's out and this will be a moot point. But it's not a moot point because it took way longer than it ever should have taken. What happened here? What was the problem? What was the roadblock that caused Android 11, which shipped just days before Duo shipped, to take so long to get on their original device. I have a hypothesis, and this hypothesis is backed, like I said, by some unsubstantiated insider sources, people that I've spoken to, and like I said earlier, take this with a pinch of salt, might totally be untrue. But here's what I think happened, and here's what I'm being told happened. What I'm being told happened is Android 12L. Let me explain what I mean here. So for those that don't know, and I've talked about this a couple times already, Android 12L is a version of Android that is coming very, very soon. In fact, you can already beta test it on a few different devices. And this version of Android is designed to work best on folding devices of various type. Folding devices like this and folding devices like this. That is the the whole point of Android 12L is to work on these larger screens because at current when you open up your average android app on a large screen like this you just get a big version of that app and that's not altogether that useful what you should be getting is more apps that work like this that have sort of a split pane thing going on and of course i chose outlook there because outlook works well on Duo, they've kind of done this sort of thing. So Android 12L is designed to work better on these big devices. It's designed to take some of the changes that people like Samsung have already made in Android, right? Things like the taskbar that Samsung has put into their version of Android. Well, Google's making their own version of that, and they're rolling that into Android 12L. Likewise, things that Microsoft has done to enable the split screen sort of thing going on. Likewise, some of the work that Microsoft has done to make Android work better on Surface Duo, that is also being rolled into the actual operating system. The idea being that on Duo, when you're using this device, your launcher is what's handling this whole split screen situation, right? Android sees a single tablet, not two different screens. So software is there to tell it if an app is launched over here, launch it over here. If an app is launched over here, 
launch it over here. That is all done in software, and it's actually apparently done, best I know, by Microsoft Launcher. And in Android 12L, that kind of uh, ability is actually just rolled into the OS so that the launcher doesn't have to do so much heavy lifting. And likewise, the taskbar for Samsung, that can be done at a more system level. Basically, they're just taking the changes that all these companies had to make to Android to, to retrofit it onto a larger screen, and they're making it more stock. They're just bringing it on board. That's great, right? That's awesome for these types of large devices. So why would that hurt Surface Duo? I hear you asking yourselves. Trust me, I can hear you. It doesn't make any sense, but it's going to make sense here because apparently these changes, Android 12L, this idea to make a, a, a different branch, right? It's not Android 12, or it's not Android 13, it's Android 12L. It's its own little branch. This idea to do that, to make a branch of Android that was good for these kinds of devices began percolating with Microsoft and Surface Duo. And a build of Android, Android 11, with some of these changes built in, some things that were going to make life much better for Surface Duo, was meant to come much, much earlier. And then at some point in that development, Right, they're working together. They're working together on this thing. But at some point, Google says to Microsoft, we're actually not going to roll these changes into Android 11. We think that this needs more time and we think that it needs to be a broader approach. We think that we need to include Samsung stuff as well. And this needs to be a much bigger focus, not just kind of for you guys, but for everybody. So then Android 11 stopped being the savior it was going to be for Surface Duo. And that got rolled into Android 12L, leaving Surface Duo sort of sitting there without the software they were expecting to get. Now let's add another layer to that. This is something that always struck me as being really odd. You may remember some reporting around July of 2020, which would be just a few short months before Duo will be on store shelves, claiming that Microsoft was bringing in Movial, bringing Movial in house to continue work on Android for Surface Duo. Now this always struck me as being odd because up until this point, Microsoft was subcontracting all of their Android work to Movial, but they were doing offsite. They were just subcontracting them. We have to ask ourselves why so close to launch, just three months out, would they choose to bring Movial in? I've heard that this was always the plan, not necessarily that exact timing, but the plan was always to bring Movial in-house as they focused more on Android. We have to wonder, is the timing of this decision significant? We know that the first builds of Android 11 rolled out in February of 2020, and the full final Android 11 rolled out, I believe, September 8th of 2020, which is just like two weeks, less than two weeks before Surface Duo came out. Is it possible that sometime in that June, July area that it became clear to Microsoft that Google was not going to uphold their end of this partnership? And let's refer here to something interesting again in that protocol article because it says, even up until the launch event, he, being Panos Panay, worried Lockheimer and Google would bail, would give up, would decide this was a dumb project and not worth their time. In that moment, announcing the thing, Panay was kind of locking Google in, and to be sure, he made it internet official. He tweeted about it. Thank you for the incredible partnership, and he tagged Lockheimer in it. Working with you over the last few months has been awesome. Hashtag Surface Duo. They were worried that this was going to happen. All I'm saying is, maybe it did. Now, I wanna be really clear here. I'm not making excuses or the fact that Android 11 has taken so long to get to the original Surface Duo. Obviously, Duo 2 launched with Android 11, and for my money, is in a radically better state than Surface Duo 1 is. This is not me making excuses for Microsoft and just saying, it's Google's fault, it's Google's fault. What I am saying is, you can give Google, maybe, if this is true, some credit for it being pushed back some. 
Now, could Microsoft have gotten things together? Should they have gotten things together sooner than they have? Absolutely. We're talking about the difference between a really bad start and a really bad middle or a really bad end. It's Microsoft's responsibility to get this going. Even if they thought they had this partnership and then Google backed out of it at some point, that's still on Microsoft too. They're a company, they understood this was a competitor. I'm not absolving them from credit for their portion of responsibility when it comes to the nature of how Surface Duo released and then how the perception of it spread and what people think about it. Now, obviously, I think it's better than people think it is, and I think Duo 2 is a lot better than people think it is. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Duo doesn't have bugs. I took my SIM out of my Duo because the bugs got worse for me to the point that I couldn't even use the thing anymore, and Microsoft deserves credit for that. All I'm doing here is trying to paint a hypothetical picture of what might have went so horribly wrong in the early days of Surface Duo and why it seems like we are only now beginning to find our sea legs with this software as features are actually beginning to roll out now on the second Duo. And it's important to note here that Duo 2 is totally re-engineered and it is designed to be an Android device. You cannot say the same thing about that guy there over my shoulder, which could also be partially responsible for the slow rate of development. You can factor in how late it was that they brought their Android team in-house as partially being responsible for the slow development. And you could also potentially have the hypothesis that they just don't care that much about that one anymore because they know that it's kind of behind the times and might not be worth devoting that much attention to. I would disagree because I think it's absolutely terrible for optics. It makes people not want to buy your products because they're going to think you're just going to abandon it immediately. But I'm just throwing out a lot of different options here to explain the rest of that slow development. Guys, here's what I want to know. What do you think about this? Do you think that this sounds plausible? I think it sounds plausible. I think it lines up with the timeline quite well. And if you look at some of these quotes, I think it's pretty clear that this is this is possible. This might be what actually caused Duo to launch in the state that it did. Now, that doesn't explain how it has stayed in this state, right? They've got to pick up their you-know-what, and they got to get moving, and they got to fix it. But could explain that rough start at least i'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below again great big pinch of salt this could all be absolute nonsense it's just something that i'm hearing and it lines up with what i'm seeing so let me know what you think down there thanks for watching this video like share subscribe all that good stuff i will see you on the next video and until then stay nerdy my friends